Nine African American teenagers was accused of raping two white women aboard a Southern Railroad freight train in North Northern Alabama. The boys was named Haywood Patterson, O. Montgomery, Clarence Norris, Willie Robertson, Andy Wright, Uzi Powell, Eugene Williams, Charlie Williams, and Roy Wright were searched for work and was racially charged. A f- and a fight broke out between the passengers. The fight is said to have started when a young white man stepped on the hand of one of the Scottsboro boys. The young white men who were fighting were forced to exit the train, enraging they conjured the, a story of how the black men were at fault for an incident. By the time the train reached Paint Rock, Alabama, the Scoro boys were met with an anger angry mob and charged with the assault of Victoria Price and Ruby Bates, two white women who were also riding the train. And they was faced charges of illegal se- sexual activity, which is sexual assault. In order to avoid these charges, they they was falsely accused to the Scott Burrow boys of rape. The original case of Scottsboro, Alabama. Only four other young African men knew each other prior to the incident on the freight train, but as the trials drew increasing regional and national attention, they became known as the Scottsboro Boys. On April the night of 1931, eight of the nine young men were convicted and sentenced to death. The judge granted Roy Wright, the youngest of the group, a mistrial because of age. 1931, nine black youths riding a freight train were arrested after being falsely accused of raping two white women. After nearly being lynched, they were brought to trial in Scottsboro, Alabama. Despite evidence that exonerated the young men, including a retraction in 1933 by one of their accusers, the state pursued the case. All white juries delivered guilty verdicts against the nine defendants, and all but the youngest, who was a 12-year-old, were sentenced to death. From 1931 to 1937, during a series of appeals and new trials, they remained in prison where they were repeatedly brutalized by guards. In 1932, the U.S. Supreme Court concluded that the Scottsboro defendants had been denied adequate counsel at trial. In 1935, the Supreme Court again ruled in favor of the defendants, overturning their convictions because Alabama had systematically excluded blacks from jury service. Finally, in 1937, four of the defendants were released. The other five were given sentences from 20 years to life. And four out of those five were paroled between 1943 and 1950. The fifth escaped prison in 1948 and fled north to Michigan. No crime in American history, let alone a crime that never occurred produced as many trials, convictions, reversals, and retrials as the case of the Scottsboro Boys.